You might be wondering why there is a large 130 written on my stove and why it keeps changing back and forth. Well, I wanted to make a non-contact thermometer that can probe the temperature of something on the stove. Not just non-contact like your normal ordinary pointy device that can just measure temperatures, but one that also projects the temperature of the thing it's measuring. And uh, that was kind of easy. But let's first uh, just see what are the temperatures of something else, like the stove itself, if I take that off, or the average pan of this bacon right here. So all this is actually done with this little projector that lives on top. Inside, it has a non-contact thermometer right there, and if you can see it, a lens that focuses the circuit board. And it's all inside of this nice little box with this little uh, slidey thing on the front printed this on the mill so that it can uh, change the focus of the number down below. Time to flip. Ooh. Anyway, all of this works together from this nice little 5 volt supply over here to project the average temperature of this little pan right here onto the stove. Let's see how I made it. You can see a little bit clear here. On the face here is the non-contact thermometer, which is pointed at a pretty hefty offset, and the actual lens. And down below is a circuit board. All of this is able to be refocused. Oh, and some magnets to go make it stick onto my hood here. So uh, let's go take off the front here and see what's underneath. Oh, one of the other neat things is the non-contact thermometer actually comes around back so it can slide forward and backward without breaking the wires. Down below in here is a small uh, boost power supply in order to take the voltage that's coming off of this 5 volt supply and boost it up enough in order to have three of those amber LEDs in series. Each digit is made out of three LEDs instead of just one and uh, does it all in series so that we can use less current. The supply also makes it so that it doesn't matter what voltage is coming in, we can control the voltage going to the LEDs on the board all the same. Let's see how uh, that little purple circuit board in there was made. Initially I strapped a bunch of LEDs and some digital controllers to this circuit board here. It was uh, a little bit too big though, they were just too large and didn't project, so I had to go smaller yet. From 0805 LEDs to 0402s. Can't really seem to get this quite in focus here, but uh, I guess you'll see over the next couple clips just how this all goes together. So I started by getting a Oshpark board. These things are really high quality. And then I just gooped some solder paste down. This is bismuth solder paste. It is some amazing stuff. It reflows at a much lower temperature than most solder pastes. You can see just for size comparison, that's a little itty bitty QFN chip. Some of these LEDs here are just the, the 0402 LEDs. They're incredibly small and I could just barely see them. And uh, I guess some of the other neat things you can see going on here is that you can actually see the little itty bitty beads that are inside of the solder paste. Solder paste is actually this kind of flux material with a whole bunch of little suspended uh, microscopic balls inside of it. At any rate, I'd put the paste down with the toothpick and I'd put the LEDs down just kind of manually using a, a pair of tweezers. Tried to get as many as I could, tried to get the orientation correct. I really just couldn't see them, but I could kind of see when something was wrong. So just had to get all the little LEDs placed right, and uh, then I could uh, move on. Well, it's time to go into the toaster oven. Just for comparison, there's my finger. Look at that. Look at that wonderful toaster oven. Cooking those circuit boards to perfection. When I use the solder paste like this and just goop it everywhere, I get tons of solder bridges on all of my parts, including these QFNs right here, which are, well, I used to think they were a pain, until I found out you can just dab a little bit of flux on, take a soldering iron, just rub it across the chip there a couple times, maybe you need to clean off your, your tip, and it pulls the bridges right out. Look at that. Perfect. I uh, also wanted to clean up some of the other aspects of the circuit board here. So you can see under the microscope that when I put on some flux and uh, I just kind of take the soldering iron up against the pads, 
you can just pull out all of these little inaccuracies, all these little annoyances here. And uh, I also needed to go in so I could clean up the LEDs and make them more, well, better aligned with where they needed to be. It looks like it operates the same. I'm putting my hand here to warm it up a little bit and letting it go. And uh, let's see what it looks like when I hook it up to some optics. It's much smaller and more readable at a distance. In fact, I think it's probably good enough. Oof, let's see if I can get this back in the field of view here. I think it probably is good enough to uh, make the rest of this project and go put it in a container. Mmm, almost crispy bacon.